one of the most important parts of SaaS is growth. How do we grow the business once we have a customer? And for that, I'm gonna draw a two by two. Now, those of you familiar with a two by two, it's, it's exactly what it is, what I say it is. It's two things by two things. On the horizontal axis, I'm gonna make sure, you know, like who, what kind of impact are you delivering? Are you delivering the same impact or new impact? And on the virtual axis, what I'm gonna do is what's your stakeholder? Who are your, the primary benefactor of all this, okay? Now, if I have the same stakeholder or new stakeholders, that is really important. Now, if I have the same impact, same product, sell to the same people, we call that renew. Now, if I have the same impact, but we're growing it, we're gonna call that upsell. If I'm selling to new people the same impact, we're gonna call that the resell. And if I'm selling to new people, new impact, that's a cross-sell. Each of these four growth areas has a really specific growth blueprint. Some people may say, but Jaco, there's no renewal. In renewal, there's no growth. But there is, there is, there is. Let me give you an idea. Who says that I have to renew a 12-month contract? Who says I have to renew that in the 11th month and 29th, 28th, 29th day of that contract? Why can't I renew it seven months? Remember, you know, like I can renew because I have a new product, a new feature, the company's growing, they have a lot more seats. That all allows me to strike a renewal contract. I don't have to wait till the 12 months. That allows me to create growth. That's one. Second thing that I can do. Remember, after we have a first year contract, I had that conversation with my customer and uh, during the first go around. And when I wanted to sell the customer, say like, hey, we offer a multi-year contract. They say, no, 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 thank you. Not yet, maybe next year. This year, I just wanna see first if it works. So when you come in year two, you can actually discuss a multi-year contract. We have proven ourselves, given us again growth potential. There's that and many, many more growth potentials simply under renewal. We need to see that for what it is, a growth potential right there. Another uh, common area of, of confusion is cross-sell. Now, the reason why we say is like, hey, cross-sell, what, what, what is it really? Well, cross-sell often, you know, like in my days I was selling to Disney, also known as the Walt Disney Company or TWDC. Now, when I was selling to Disney, I was selling, in this case, to the technology division. Let's for, for, for simplification call it ABC. And when I won ABC, I was so delighted because, oh my gosh, I'm gonna win Disney all over. I mean, you're gonna see the product that I'm representing everywhere, even on the boats and in the parks. And then Disney asked me to work with one of my coaches said like, hey, you probably need to start working with ESPN. And so I'm walking in brass into ESPN if I own the place. I already walked, in, you know, like I already, earned the business of ABC, I'm coming in from an on an executive recommendation into ESPN because for sure they're gonna buy my stuff too, right? And ESPN goes like, no, 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 no. We already have a preferred vendor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you, try to get you out of ABC because we want our preferred vendor to actually sell to ABC. And suddenly you're under full attack. This you need to understand. Cross-sell is arguably the hardest part of the sales process in these circumstances. Even harder than the acquisition sale because you have to deal with all the political battles inside the company. In this case, Connecticut is a far way away from Los Angeles. Really complicated, ABC is New York. But you know, like the, the Walt Disney Company being in, being in Los Angeles. So what you see is really, really complicated there, okay? Cross sell, keep that in mind. What I'm gonna do in the next step, I'm gonna map these to what you may have seen before, which we call the bow tie model. How do we look at the SaaS sales method and how does these, these four fit in? Let's take a look at that in the bow tie model.